wakurugenzi during the second world war the US government will form organization flani inaitwa WASP WASP ni acronym for Women Air Force Service Pilots na role yao wa reshi ilikuwa ga wakati kuna new equipment ambayo inafaa isaidie kwa vita hao ndio walikuwa wanai test sababu gani sababu the the male counterparts walikuwa deep in the battlefields so badala ya kutoa wale mandume kwa battlefields wa kuje kwanza kutest mandege na mamiza na manini wasp ilifomiwa au mademo walikuwa na take hizo equipment zote mazee kwa tests na nini wa certain kila kitu iko sawa they themselves transport those fighter jets and aircrafts huko kwa battlefield wanaume wanazichukulia huko wanaendelea na vita around 22nd no 26th of august 1944 one of the wasp pilots maze mresha naitwa gertrude tompkins alishapiga test yake safi sana kwa a sophisticated military jet hapo inajita uh, mustang p51 na after maze wa certain kila kitu iko sawa um gertrude akataskiwa jona responsibility ya kutransport hiyo mustang kutoka los angeles mpaka new jersey So hiyo siku maze 26th of October 1941 uh, Gatu da katoka fiti sana ile na quick fast akapiga ndege moto akielekea New Jersey. On the other side of New Jersey maze after some time walikuwa na mgojea huko but unfortunately Gatu never showed up. So wakamgoja wakamgoja wakona hizo hawasi zimepita sana a, 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 a rescue mission was launched watu wakaanza kumtafuta along the path yenye alikuwa nasafiri nini nini after three days still nothing such still went on after like three months mazee wa certain eh hapa there's no way mrembo anaweza kuwa kwa alive maybe something ilim happen here either kanguka deep inside the oceans ama forest ama somewhere to mali si accessible jo na hiyo story ikaishia hapo uh, kumekuwa na attempts za kujaribu kumtafuta to date but unfortunately none has been successful uh, na naongea as recent as i think 2011 wamejaribu jo kuna some documentary guys walijaribu kwenda kutafuta wakapata wreckage ya an aircraft um, an air force aircraft but hawakuweza uh, kubainisha ukweli ya kwamba hiyo ndio ilikuwa ndege ya Gertrude Tompkins um so hiyo time yote wa, wa resh walikuwa in operation hawakuwa regarded as military people in fact wasp ilikuwa ni kikosi ya mademo umetolewa kwa the civil servants wa states watu walikuwa wanafanyia kazi serikali wakatrainiwa kwa pilots au ndio walikuwa wamepatiwa kazi ya wasp but maze juzi wameka chini wako na ile kazi yao mademo walifanya maze uh, top military jobs hiyo hakuna vile wanaweza i downplay na officially eh, wasp ikakuwa recognized as a military outfit yeah unfortunately to date nobody knows whatever happened to Gertrude Thompson Kurugenzi <laughs> my man yo maze headline hitters na kama kawa if you see Kurugenzi in the building you just know he's got the juice ah right wadao leo tunaenda moja kwa moja mpaka Canada e, city flani pale inaitwa Montreal mwaka in ni around 1983 if i'm not mistaken kama si 83 ni 81 but sana sana ni 1983 e time in fact niambieni ni mwezi gani na tarehe ni kitambo tangu niwapatie assignment so e time maze kuna pilot hatari sana pale anaitwa captain bob captain bob ameingia kazi hii siku anafaa wapige kazi na first officer morris pale it's a beautiful day perfect weather for flying Captain Bob anaingia na park gari yake pale kwa parking 
akitoka kwa gari ndiyo aende ingie kwa airport aende anze mambo yake anakutana na the other set of pilots ambayo wametoka kuendesha hiyo hiyo ndege yeye anaenda kuchukua e, sababu hivyo ndio wageni operate ndege haipumziki pilots ndio pumzika ikifika tu hivi hii crew inatoka crew ingine inaingia huyu hiyo ndege na sababu the more una pack ndege the more una ground ndege the more losses you are making so Anakutana na hii set ya our pilots wametoka pale anawauliza eh hey, machine iko aje of course ako curious sababu gani sababu these guys were flying a brand new 767 Boeing ilikuwa ndege very sophisticated maze ai machine zinacheza pale in fact ilikuwa imefika point imetoa mpaka role ya flight engineer sasa wa need ku fly ndege wakiwa watatu wakiwa wawili ni enough the plane inafanya kila kitu yenye inahitajika kufanya still nasikia ndege siju kama tuko sawa iko ndani ya story kwa hivyo tuendelee hapo sawa so captain bob anauliza eh, mapilot hao wamefika ni aje mtu yangu ndege iko vipi wanawaambia ndege ni mufti sana lakini kuna kanoma kidogo but haifai kukushtua ah noma gani so pale kwa ndege kuna kitu inaitwa fkis FQIS ni FQIS na meaning ya FQIS ni fuel quantity indicating system. Hii lazima tuseme tena sababu nataka ingie kwa kichwa. This is the main character of our story. FQIS is the fuel quantity indicating system. FQIS. Let's say it one more time. Fuel quantity indicating system. FQIS. Bye, tuko sawa. <laughs> Aiko <laughs> ala binalia huko. Eh pilot mm, amefika pale wamejadiliana. Waka agree eh hiyo FKC iko na shida kiasi lakini no it's it's not a big problem see you know what to do when your FKC is not working. Of course, uh pilot ako na experience anajua. So what happens ni FKC waga ina relay information in two channels the information ya kukuambia fuel quantity yako iko namna gani and the reason they relay it in two channels ni ndio ikuwe fail safe eh hey, in case channel moja ianguke ama kitu i happen uko na one more channel ya ku confirm lakini channel moja ikianguka i channel moja imebaki pia ufai kuiamini 100% itumie tu kama guide lakini ukiwa na one channel unafaa uende upime hiyo mafuta yako manually kuna kitu inaitwa drip stick. I hope you have your net notebooks guys. E drip stick unaendaga nayo kwa wing ya ndege sababu fuel tank ya ndege iko kwa wings. Unaenda unaingiza hiyo drip stick. Hiyo drip stick inapimanga hiyo fuel iko centimeters ngapi. Now, once you have the total number of centimeters of fuel in your tank, it's up to you now to convert e centimeters into liters. Kuna vile kuna calculations inakushow kama fuel yako ni 60 centimeters, eh, kuna vitu unafanya hapo kari 1 times 1 algebra nini nini inakupatia the fuel in liters. Now, Once you have your fuel in liters unapiga calculation nyingine tena sababu fuel in an aircraft is not measured in liters it's measured in kilograms or pounds so unapiga ya sababu yako i convert from liters to pounds all right hapo sawa so the pilot anatoka hapo ameshaambiwa ndege iko sawa na huyu pilot mwingine ni hiyo shida tu kidogo ya fkis fuel quantity indicating system anaenda anaingia pale E, anaanza kufanya mambo yake hapo unajua e, pre flight checks kuangalia he, ni nini nyingine haiko sawa ni nini nini akaenda pale akakonfirm akaona okay e, ah no 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 sorry sorry before the pilot aingie kwa ndege kupiga checks flight engineer akakuwa ashafika pale kwa ndege tayari e, e, lazima before ndege itoke angalie ni vitu gani zinahitajika ni vitu gani ziko faulty ni nini nini flight engineer ana ah, maintenance ni mtu wa maintenance sorry si flight engineer mtu wa maintenance anaingia kwa cockpit anaangalia pale magages za fuel nini anapata fkis eh, ina show lakini ina show na channel moja channel moja 
iko faulty na hiyo ndio kitu ule pilot aliambia huyu pilot wa saa hii captain bob alimwambia maze kuna ngori na fkis eh, but i think maybe before flight yako engineer ata i mean msi wa maintenance ataicheki but as poi cheki si wewe unajua procedure eh, ifanye manually nini just to be sure sawa so jamaa wa maintenance amefika ameona oh fkis one channel is not working So wacha tufanye aje wacha twende hapa kwa circuit breakers tufinye finye mavitu hapo eh, tu disengage kitu kidogo tuipige tena ndani tuone kama tuki restart iki twitter itachukua itarudi fit because this is a relatively new aircraft there is really no reason for this thing not to be working So akapiga ile kitu ndani pale kwa circuit breaker akazima hii kitu yote sasa. In fact hata ile one channel ilikuwa inaonyesha sasa haiko sababu amefanya mambo yake hapa kwa circuit breaker. As anajipanga sasa kurudisha sasa restart hii kitu anaitwa huko chini anaambiwa eh hey, maze kuja uchekicheki mambo fulani hapa I think ni hiyo story ya refueling na kupima na vitu kama hizo. So the guy anasahau kurudisha hii kitu on anawacha hivyo circuit breaker ikiwa off ni nini nini na yeye anato anatoka anaenda huko chini kwenda kuangalia mambo ya refueling na nini na nini it is at this point that captain bob na first officer morris ambao ndio watakuwa our pilots kwa flight wanaingia kufanya mambo yao pre flight checks hapa na pale ni nini 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 captain bob anaingia anaketi kwa kiti anaangalia mambo yake hapa mbele anaangalia magage zake hapa za fuel na nini na nini ana discover fkis Hayonyeshi kitu. But kumbuka ameambiwa na pilot mwingine huko there is a little problem with the fkis but haina mambo just go the manual way. So Captain Bob anafikiria fkis haiwaki kabisa kabisa. Kumbe ule pilot hakuwa anamaanisha hivyo. Ule pilot alikuja na channel moja ya fkis. One was working. But engineer amekuja ameizima kibati mbaya akakosa kuiwasha. So Bob ameingia hapa kwa cockpit aka discover haya. Leo by the way tunaenda bila FKs. Hii kitu ni noma. Hatuwai tutoke lakini ukiona ule pilot mwingine alitoka inamaanisha Air Canada flight number 5 uh, 31 I think mani 541. Wamempatia walimpatia blessings ya kutoka. So ni sawa tutapambana. Kile tutafanya mimi nitatoka niende ni shuhudie huko tukipima ile mafuta tuhakikishe kila kitu iko sawa iko sawa. Bas Captain Bob anatoka hapo kwa kiti yake, anashuka chini anaenda mpaka pale kwa wing, mahali wanaume wamejipanga hapo kupiga nini? Refueling. Sababu hii ndege iko na safari. Inafaa itoke Montreal, iende city inaitwa Ottawa, itoke Ottawa, iende place fulani inaitwa Edmonton, ni mbali kiasi. So ameshuka chini, ameenda amepata majamaa, wameshafanya mambo yao na dripstick washampimia kila kitu wakamwambia, "Eh, hey, gadhe tumepima na dripstick, tumepata uko na 60 cm." of fuel. So hii 60 cm tunapiga hesabu zetu calculation 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 ni nini nini tumejipata eh, tukiconvert in liters uko na liter kama I think 1700 or something. But kumbukeni mafuta pale kwa ndege wakati tuna log pale chini kwa ile log book yetu huwa tuiandiki in liters. Tunaiandikaga kama weight, tunaiandikaga in kilograms ama in pounds. Now around that time which was 1983 if i'm not wrong it's either 83 or 81 but i think ni 83 canada was transitioning from e design a pound which does not make sense at all nani alikuja na hiyo kitu ya pounds i making sense for anyone first of all at short for me a pounds ni lbs why nani alikuja na hiyo kitu anafaa tu apelekwe mahali afanywe ile kitu na afanywe ile ki So Canada walikuwa wanataka kuondoke hiyo kitu ya pounds wanaingia wapi the metric system. So sasa wanapima vitu na grams and kilograms. This new aircraft the 767 log yake ya fuels ulikuwa unafaa uiandike in kilograms. Hao walikuwa washatoka kwa pounds. Sasa wako kgs. So Captain Bob hajawahi kuwa kwa situation yenye ana need to convert liters into kilograms. He has never been there. All the aircraft amekuwa akifanyia kazi FKIS inafanya kazi. So I need hiyo kitu yote. Ya kazi yake ni kuangalia FKIS inasema tuko na fuel kiasi gani. Aha, tuna need kuongeza hii. Sababu FKIS inakuambia. But 
Here is a situation where this F kiss is not working. So now lazima wafanye ile calculation na mkono. Captain Bob na First Officer Morris wanajua kufanya hesabu ya kubadilisha liters to kgs. Oh, uliwafundisha. Hawajui. So wanaenda kwa hao watu wa mafuta wanawaambia nyinyi mnadilingi na hii mambo ya mafuta ni convertieni. Ni convertieni hii mafuta into kgs. Najua this is the number of kgs I need. So nyinyi pigeni hiyo calculation mjue muta pump lita ngapi ndio mimi nikuwe nimepata the kgs that i want ah watu wa mafuta wakamwambia chill bra relax we got you wakapiga hesabu zao wakamaliza wakampatia mpaka formula wakamwambia ndio hii formula ya ku convert wakati uko peke yako hauna sisi unajikonvertia we mwenye we mwenyewe ndio hii na these are the number of uh, the, the, this is the amount in liters tuta pump up andani itakuwa equivalent to the kgs you are looking for are we together captain akaambia very nice moment saidia fanyeni hivyo na majamaa waka pump fuel captain akaingia ndani ready for what ready for take off guys kitu hawakujua ni ya kwamba as the fuel guys are pumping fuel into the wings the calculation walikuwa wamepiga and the formula they gave captain bob was not for converting liters into kilograms it was for converting liters into pounds na kama wewe unajua mambo ya pounds na kgs vizuri unajua for you to end up with 1 kg you need a little over 2 pounds So by the time our sewe wanamaliza kufiwe hizi wings hapa chini hiyo ndege ilikuwa na only 45% of the total amount of fuel it needed to go from Mon- uh, Montreal all the way to Edmonton 45% less than half but hawa walikuwa sawa wanajua wamepiga hesabu yao vizuri but kumbe mm-mm. Haya. Captain ameingia ndani. Tunangoja sasa watu wafanye mambo yao. 67 passengers wakuje waingie. Tuwapeleke Ottawa kwanza. Watu wa Ottawa washuke, tuchukue wengine, tukimbie Edmonton. Ni ka distance ki design. Mafuta tuko nayo, but ni 45% of the total amount of fuel that we need. Do we know? We don't know. Si tunajua tuko sawa. Why? Sababu we have nothing to confirm because our F kiss is off. Are you work? Bas. Passengers wakaingia, kila kitu iko sawa, milango zikafungwa, taxi mpaka kwa runway, take off, teke teke na wakaenda. First leg ilikuwa kutoka Montreal mpaka Ottawa. 45% ilikuwa enough fuel kuafikisha Ottawa. So wakaenda wakaland Ottawa vizuri, no problem whatsoever. Kila kitu mufti shwari. Wakafika Ottawa eh Wakaulizana ulizana huko huko ground eh mafuta unataka tukuweke kiasi gani captain si alishapatiwa formula na wale watu wa ground hana habari formula yake ni wrong inachukua pounds badala ya kgs akapiga hesabu zake akawaambia this is the amount of fuel i need for the second leg of the journey from Ottawa to Edmonton ah wale hawaezi bishana si pilot ndio amesema wakaweka mafuta kwa wings for the second leg kumbe wameweka half in fact less than half of the fuel required for the second leg blanda bin blanda wadao mnaona hii story hakuna mahali pazuri inaelekea i'm sure by now you can see you can be able to tell kila kitu iko sawa wakakama wakasema ni aje tushafanya mambo yetu eh, adios muchachos guys mkienda edmonton muwasalimie sana murudi na mandizi tutafurahi Pilot akaweka ndege yake full power teketeke kwa runway fiu, and he took off Now the journey from Ottawa to Edmonton si karibu ni far it's quite a distance but these guys are operating on 45% of the fuel capacity required So it does not take them long 
as wako kwa cockpit feeling very nice wanaendesha ndege ya kifahari Boeing 767 mpya in fact kwa, kwa one of the 67 passengers ni pilot anasukumaga an older aircraft a Boeing 727 hata ameshindwa kukaa kwa kiti huko nyuma ametoa mikanda amekuja mpaka kwa cockpit ndani kuangalia oh my gosh yani mnasikia fit guys hii ndio mashini mnaendesha mimi pande yangu bado niko na flight engineer tunavinyana tuna kwa cockpit watu watatu sababu ndege haina akili ya kujiambia vitu nyinyi hamuna hata engineer ndege inakufanyia kila kitu oh my hey, what mbona afkisi yako iko afkis haina noma lakini tushapima ah nice hey, you guys must be hey i'm loving it we hata kari, kabi, eh, kabla amalize kusema i am loving it hapa juu <laughs> kuna kitu inaitwa fuel pump pressure indicator or something i, I think ni me butcha kidogo but it's something along those lines basically wakapata information ya kuambia there is very low pressure on the left side fuel pump sababu si unajua tank ni mbili sababu wings ni mbili kuna fuel pump ya huku na fuel pump ya huku on the left side hey, pressure too low hey, wanaangalia wanashindwa pressure too low why The only reason tunaweza kuwa na low pressure pale ni kama mafuta iko enough. Wanaangalia pale kwa ndege wana input mahali wali input ile information wana pata I chief we have more than enough fuel. Makosa. Sababu e system wanaangalia fuel ni system that you as a pilot you have to input iso figures based on your calculations. But if you remember correctly the calculations were wrong in the first place so e information wame enter kwa hii computer inaitwa ecam engine something that i mess up dia bieni ecam ina maanisha nini hapo e information ni wrong so au ko convince mafuta yao iko sawa but hey low pressure sensor wanaanza kujadiliana maze low pressure okay haina mambo fanya aje zima hiyo pump We have more than enough fuel. Zima yo pump. Wacha tu operate na ile. Pup ile pump inazimwa. Na wanaendelea na safari kama kawaida. Lakini hii pilot anashindwa. This is a new aircraft. Mbona mbona mashida all of a sudden? Ai, before ajiulize mambo namna gani? Low fuel pressure right side pump. Aje. First of all, this is an hard off. Never should anything of this caliber happen in an aircraft two components in a fail at the same time never like it's such a rare phenomenon baka ile uh, checklist ya boeing haina hiyo unajua kuna kwa na checklist ya how to react when a b c d happens so wanaenda kutafuta ukipoteza fuel pump zote unafaa react aje haiko kwa manuals why it is not supposed to happen chances of it happening is a million to one so aiko kwa checklist but wamesha poteza pressure on the right side fuel pump there is a problem there is a huge problem because once you lose both pumps in a manisha in a matter of minutes akutakuwa na mafuta inaingia kwa engines na ukikosa mafuta kwa engines mtu yangu ni blanda wamechanganyikiwa captain bob na first officer morris wamefungua makara document zote kwa hiyo cockpit yani checklist zote wame peruse pages hakuna karibu watoe taifa leo kwa kiti wa peruse nothing hakuna kitu hapa ni sasa ni nguvu na imani ya, ya Mwenyezi Mungu ndio itatufikisha so ikakuwa sasa hapa lazima tufanye nini tu radio tower tuambie eh hey, ni aje eh hey, mambo imeharibika eh hey, any time tuta lose ai hata hiyo thought haikuisha left side engine flame out meaning hakuna mafuta inaingia kwa engine engine imezima so now wamebakisha engine moja na washa wana vile hiyo sequence of events imekuwa iki happen vile pump ilianza nini pump hapa so hiyo ime flame out so it's only a matter of minutes or less for this other engine to flame out as well guys before long the second one ika flame out so now This brand spanking new Boeing 767 has been reduced to a kite. Imebakisha tu kamba na kijana mdogo huko chini. Eh, eh because it's not gliding. Hakuna engines, nothing. Wah! 
Procedure niliwapatia vitu kama hizi zikihappen unapiga nduru in your mother tongue alafu una relax nini so i guess walifanya hizo vitu zote then waka radio control tana tawa kuambia mazee mayday 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 tuko mbaya sababu we have lost power completely we have nothing no juice from the engines nothing screens zetu ni blank hakuna kitu sasa hii mazee ni noma so we are gliding to an alternate airport kwa uh, town inaitwa Winnipeg Winnipeg iko somewhere along the way Ah eh, traffic kwa mbe ina mambo eh, ukipima hesabu zako unaonaje mtatoboa Winnipeg akasema eh tuna cruise at 40000 plus feet so by the time to lose altitude to lose altitude tutakuwa tumeshaingia area za Winnipeg so we'll we'll make it there ah iko sawa so akapatiwa coordinates za Winnipeg vizuri nini kila kitu sawa do you need emergency uh, services tutaita ambulance nini wote watakuwa hapo akasema sawa wacha tufanye nini tupambane So as jama anajaribu ku turn controls ndio aelekee the new coordinates zenye amepatiwa za Winnipeg ana discover oh my gosh once you have lost your engines automatically you lose what hydraulics hydraulics ndio zinatumiwangwa kupawa hizo vitu zote control column inafanya sijui maflaps zifanye nini oh ukitaka ku turn ukitaka ku raise pitch ukitaka ku dive uh, una need hydraulics but sasa since hakuna engine we have no hydraulics kutan hiyo kitu ni kama kutan steering ya gari wakati imezimwa ushe ushe jaribu kutan wili andai wakati imezimwa ni, ni noma unaikaga ugali hapo deadly luckily Boeing 767 si ndege hivi hivi kuna ram turbine inatokaga hapa kwa mkonyo ya ndege <laughs> hapa kwa mkonyo inaangushaga ka kitu kanaka ka propeller kadogo ko ndege zingine i think wanazitaga auxiliary power unit apu so hii 767 ikangoa ka ram turbine hapa chini aka ka propeller uaga kana generate power this power is good for powering instruments wakati hauna hauna engine power at all so at least ram turbine vile ile kikin instruments zikarudi so now they have instruments and they have very little hydraulics meaning ni ngumu kuoperate ika mambo lakini it's not impossible eh, ile ram taba inafanya mambo yake so sasa ikakuwa ni nini tuanze kupiga hesabu yetu sawa sawa sababu kama hatutafanya maths yetu correctly we will not make it eh, at Winnipeg Winnipeg itatuchenga na ni hivyo tutaanguka place sci-fi so now hesabu zinapigwa design gani kuna kitu hapa em, Eh, siko shoka kama ni altimeter inakushoi gile altitude yenye uko na vile unaenda ukichange altitude so kama uko 41000 feet and you are dropping unaona gani kikushoi uko 41000 uko 40000 uko 39000 uko 38 so unaweza tell the rate of descent ukiwa na hiyo ako ka ako ka mashi, ako ka instrument hapo So now since uh, machine zao hapa zina fail lazima wafanye hizi hesabu manually. Angalie rate of descent hapa na angalie distance ya kwenda Winnipeg na speed yenye wanaenda nayo. Apige hesabu zake aone kama ata make kuwekelea ndege kwa airport in Winnipeg. So wakapiga hesabu zao haraka haraka okay tunashuka na rate ya this nini rate of descent is this eh, speed tunaenda nayo ni hii eh, control tower wanawasaidia pia. Eh hey, mazee from our radars tunaona manaenda speed na kaa hivi nini nini. So wakapiga hesabu zao wakaona wow 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 wongo mbaya. The rate at which we are descending there is no way we are making it to Winnipeg. Wongo mbaya. Hapo tutakuwa tumedanganyana we are not making it. We, sasa ni pressure mtu yangu. Yaani hii kitu ni from bad to worse. Hakuna kitu inakusa. Ya, ni noma. So waka ready huko wakaambia mazee wadao jo tumepiga hesabu as to fraishi. Mbona Winnipeg is too far. Hatuwezi enda Winnipeg. Kai. Sasa alternate airport ya nini ni gani? Mungu walali. First officer Morris served uh, uh, kwa the uh, Royal Canadian Air Force at some point. He remembers there is a small town in Canada called Manitoba. Manitoba iko time we were stationed there during my air force days at an air force facility called Gimli. 
Nikiangalia between Winnipeg na Gimli saa hii, Gimli inaka kabisa kabisa that's where our chances. Atuwezi atuwezi Winnipeg, Rosafi. Let's go to Gimli. So anaambia radio eh, control tower ni aje. I, I, ile Air Force yetu ya Gimli bado iko it's been a while tangu niingie hizo area. Unaweza confirm hiyo Air Force base ni operational. Ambi yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, the infrastructure is still there. If you are looking for a runway, the runway at Gimli is still there. Unfortunately, it's no longer government property. Eh, I think Gabawa li decommission then some civilians walk by, but the, it's there. The runway is that I can tell you for a fact, the runway is still there. So akaambia na twende. Let's go to Gimli. Wacha twende tu yangushe huko. It's better off Gimli than Winnipeg. We are not making Winnipeg. That's for sure. That's for, that's a fact. So wakaanza kuweka input tena kwa ndege. Change course, change direction. We are going to Manitoba. We are dropping this thing at Gimli. Kila kitu iko sawa. Now we are gliding. So no na wana engine at all at all at all. The only source of power kwa nayo ni ile ram turbine ina inapiga ile kamambo but that's only useful for powering the instruments. So these guys are gliding, they are gliding pole pole, wanaangalia altimeter yao, wanaona the rate at which they are losing altitude. Wanaangalia hiyo distance, the speed nini so lazima uhakikishe ndege ina maintain a certain speed. Otherwise your speed ikiwa less, they will not make it to Gimli. Na speed walikuwa na fa maintain ni 420 km per hour. So lazima hao watumie ujanja yao ya pilots ya kuhakikisha at any given time wako at 400. So how do you do that when you do not have any juice coming from the engines? Una dive once in a while. When you dive, si una, ni kama kuweka gari kwa mteremko. Ukizima gari uko free kwa mteremko si itaenda mbio. Same thing. You, you dive ukiwa uko juu, you're losing altitude lakini speed una maintain. So ukisha maintain una level off kidogo. Una glide. <laughs> Mpaka wakati hiyo speed itaisha juice una dip tena ivo ivo until uhakikishe umefika hiyo area so that's exactly what they did wali glide waka glide until now they had gimli in sight wali waliona kabisa there is the runway we have gimli in sight Un, yani sigh of relief unasikia yani Mungu wako na sisi we have been akizo ni ma challenges gani tumekuja nazo lakini Mungu hajatuachilia now we have a runway on site iko mbali kidogo but nikiangalia vile tuna lose um, altitude na speed tunaenda nayo we are definitely making it Mungu apewe sifa hata tuimbe pambio moja because this this is amazing guys kabla waingie inua bwana inua etc wana call ATC wanawaambia guys we have done our research on Gimli Gimli is now a private facility and people use it for motorsports wanaendaga huko ku race na magari guess what guys today being a saturday it's race day kuna watu wako kwa runway wana race na magari Ay. oh my god We have no way of alerting them. <laughs> ya kwamba you guys are coming. By the time we relay information to the cops, huko cops wafanye mambo yao mtakuwa mshafika because I can already tell you guys are less than a minute away from Gimli. Sasa hizi ni ngori gani? Sasa already tuko na watu 67 ndani hii aircraft wenye tu tume cross fingers hivi tu waweke chini ya live. Then unaniambia runway tunataka kwenda ku run imejaa watu families wanapiga tu mababa kiu huko manyama choma wenzao wa kirace na magari. Ai, kwa ni ushetani na rada yake ni which? So ikakuwa sawa haina mambo. And this was particularly a threat because once you have lost all your engines, your plane becomes ni kama nini? Unajua engine ndio inafanyaga ujue ndege iko inakama sababu unasikia sauti. Once hizo engines zime switch you off inakujaga au iski itakuchota tu. Jua whisky hai hai gurumi so in a glide tu ikikam hakuna msa anaisikia na kuna watu kwa runway. Blanda. So waka cross two fingers wakakaza nini? Ile watu wanakazanga watu wa Manchester. Na wakasema bas oh pole stini kwa nimesahau kwa hapa. Bas, wacha twende. Liwe liwa, liwe liwalo. 
as they are approaching Gimli like this they discover tulikuja tukibembeleza hii kitu ndio tusipoteze altitude because we needed to be you know still airborne by the time tunafika huku but tumebembeleza hii altitude so much sasa hii tumefika mahali we need to land but we are still too high up lazima tutafute vile hii ndege ita lose altitude rapidly ndio to make the landing otherwise the only other option ni kuzunguka tena 360 Ivo uki lose altitude hoping by the time una come cool line up na runway tena you've lost enough altitude for a landing but now the problem is for them to make that entire 360 ah bila juice impossible so waki make 360 our gongi runway wataanguka kwa vichaka wakikuja vile wanakuja they are too fast too high so lazima watafute design ya ku lose altitude mbio na waweze ku make the la the landing luckily Captain Bob ni mtu ameendesha vitu zinaitwa gliders. Sijui kama mshaiona watu wana distrap na kitu fulani kako na wings, alafu wanakimbia mbio kwa cliff. Wana eh si unakajua kwa kitu spikes. Alafu unajiachilia. Captain Bob amekuwa akiendesha gliders sana. Sana. Azinaga engine hiyo kitu. Una una gliding kitu mpaka unafika. So akasema I know this thing I'm, I'm, I'm flying is not a glider. It's a you know a, a whole commercial aircraft. But for us to make that landing I need to treat it like a glider ndio tufanye hivyo so there is a maneuver guys I, man KQ bana they are sleeping on this talent there is a maneuver called um it's called uh, something sleep forward sleep it's a forward sleep so if your aircraft is coming like this eh unapiga control column to one side so ndege yako inakaa hivi ikishakaa hivi itaanza ku deep ikitoka unajua hivi imeshikiliwa na wings ikikaa hivi ita deep but for you not to lose direction unakanyaga ma pedals pale chini the pedals pale chini kwa aircraft si za brakes no <laughs> don't be lied to hizi pedals zina control kitu inaitwa radar huko kwa tail si tail ya ndege inakaa hivi wakikanyaga nini utaona ikifanya fanya hivi irada ndio natumikaga ku kutan ndege yeah very nice now because they've lost hydraulics kuna vitu zinaitagwa flaps hizi eh, flaps so, zinasaidiaga wakati unakuja ku land unaweza shuka chini vizuri na usi usianguke like usi lose uh, lift but hawana uh, juu hydraulics zimeenda kwao so flaps aziwasaidi kuna vitu zinaitagwa speed brakes hapo kwa wing huaga zikiengejiwa unaona wing inaanza kufanya tu vitu hivi. Hizo sp- speed brakes hawana sababu gani? Hydraulics hazifanyi. So hii hii forward slip ndio the only option imebaki. So of course Captain Rob ana skuma ndege hiki design, alafu anakanyaga rada, ile rada inakaa ki design, so inaisaidia isipotee ndege ina maintain course. And true to his word and actions, hii kitu ina drop vizuri to a good height, then anaiweka vile inafaa na anakuja ku line up kwa runway maze anaangalia hivi yake runway wase wako so i guess wase waliona unajua whisky but ule mtu mwenye ame face kuna watu waliona wakaanza kuambiana eh hey, maze guys tokeni 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 this one is coming for a landing apart from some two boys on a bicycle in fact wana pedal kwa runway hawajui they have no clue haya before hata tuingia pa kwa landing there are things you need to do right before you touch down kuna vitu zinaitwa landing gears. Hmm? Landing gears ni hizi mataya za ndege. Hydraulics uaga ukishagonga kale ka button, hydraulics zinatoa hiyo landing gear na inazi lock into place. And once all the three landing gears lock into place, kuna green lights zinakuaga hapa kwa dashboard zinakuonyesha all your three gears ziko locked. So you're ready to land. But now do they have hydraulics? uliwaekea hawana so now kuna button nyingine hapa ya ku drop hizo miguu manually ina drop na gravity unajua ziko na uzito so fingers crossed na nini imekazwa ikitu itoke na gravity with enough power enough force to lock it in place so wanagonga hiyo button and they watch their dashboard waiting for the three green lights so landing gear kwanza landing gear pili pa 
lock perfectly two green lights nose gear nothing ilitoka lakini haikutoka na enough force ya ku lock in place so i go engaged nikamguka ametoka tu lakini akajeshikiliwa na kitu meaning ukiekelea ndege kana rudi ndani kana kana tandikwa but mazee tushafika hapa eh hakuna kitu kingine tunaweza fanya tunaekelea ndege kwa runway vile hii vile iko so after they have their two green lights na kamoja kamekata is when they discover eh, there is a bunch of boys pale kwa runway wana skuma bicycle wana race wana race na bike so wakaka mwekelea ndege kwa runway but uzuri waga unaanza ga kuwekelea na landing gear za nyuma kwanza before the nose gear touches down wakajaribu kukabembeleza kabisa hii nose gear hii e vizuri wayekelea vizuri so waliekelea tu nose gear hivi kwanza ika collapse then ndege ikaanguka na hapa <laughs> ikaenda it scrap your lami deadly friction is insane hiyo sauti ya kugonga barabara na kuscrape lami ndio ilifanya watoi wakajua wait a minute <laughs> guys 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 hiki tu wewe bicycle take take wakatoka kwa randwe so the knee ka come ika ika scrape ika scrape the, the friction was too much ika ikaanza kutoa sparks na moto ikaanza kuwaka but surprisingly captain bob na first officer morris hawakuwa na pressure sababu gani they knew i moto imewaka hapa ni nonsense hakuna mahali inaenda because why inawaka na fuel gani <laughs> we have no fuel guys <laughs> Watu wa race day wanakuaga na maambulance zao na watu wao wa moto sababu hata ma race za gari waga zinapata accidents na moto zinawaka. Watu wamekuja na mafaya extinguisher kila mahali. Ai, captain anashuka hivi anaambia relax guys, relax. Hii hata ukipuliza na mdomo itapoa hii. No need to worry guys. Yeah, iko tu sawa. So wanakaa wana zima zima hiyo moto kidogo iko hapa, wanatoa zile mashoot watu waga wana slide na wakishuka all 67 souls on board and the crew wanashuka unscratched kuna mtu aliumia hata mmoja both in the, from the aircraft and on the ground kila mtu anakuwa rescued anatolewa hapo sawa sawa inakuwa mambo iko sawa maze awa se wali glide distance mrefu sana in fact watu wanawasomanga kwa ma classes muli glide aje yo distance yote muli juaje kupima hizo vitu zote nini nini it was crazy so of course uh, investigations ka happen kwa nini kitu kama hii inaweza happen how do you fly a whole plane with uh, no less than half the fuel required so ndio hiyo story ya pounds to kg zika kama ka wakagundua oh there's a huge problem here makosa ile ingililia hapo so sasa hii wakaeka laws na masheria za kuhakikisha blanda kama hiyo hai it why happen again ever kila kitu iko sawa sasa of course sababu like uh, you know when push comes to shove lazima mtu a, a, a take responsibility hapa uh, ilikuwa ruled as pilot error eh uh, ju the least maze you can do in such a situation is just know your mathematics jo just know your conversions unajua vizuri sasa tumetoka kwa pounds tuna operate na kilograms jifanyie hizo vitu acha ku trust trust wase ni responsibility yako kama pilot kuhakikisha kila kitu iko sawa done up to standard so joe your story akapigwa suspension for three months eh, captain bob first officer morris pia akapigwa suspension ya wiki mbili yeah but eh, as a result of that incident something like that may never happen again yeah because of that bas hapo ndio tunafunga story yetu ya the gimli glider it has an a happy ending i like it yes muchachos peace okay ah, yote hapo nakuja hapa sahi